In this video, we continue our look at CSEC physics participle questions. Now, this question comes from May, June 2015, paper 2, question 5. And this question has to do with um, electricity and um, electrical circuits, right? So, let's begin by looking at the question. Now, the first part of the question, A, part 1, says, explain what is meant by the term electrical resistance. Um, let's talk about the word resistance. Resistance basically comes from to resist, a synonym for which is to oppose, right? So when you speak about resistance, a synonym for resistance is opposition. So when you speak about electrical resistance, we're talking about electrical opposition, but electrical opposition to what, right? So this opposition is basically to the movement of charge or to the flow of an electric current. So when you speak about electrical resistance, electrical resistance is essentially a measure of the opposition to the flow of charge or to the um, or to the flow of an electric current, right? So essentially, that is what electrical resistance is: um, opposition to current flowing. Good. Um, part two says complete table two to provide information regarding electrical meters. Now, table two requires a lot of of, of writing. Um, so I'll just basically go through what needs to be said or what needs to be written instead of writing it down, right? So table two basically, and of course if you're watching this video, I expect that you'll be looking at the past paper as well. So you basically see the table, right? So table two basically has um, meters and it has under that meter column, it has a meter and a volt meter. And it has a column which says how to connect in a circuit, series or parallel. And then you have another column for resistance, high or low. And of course, there's a reason, another column, for reasons for size of resistance, right? So you have meters, two, a meter and volt meter. Next column, you have how to connect them in a, series, in a circuit, whether series or parallel. Next column, resistance, whether, whether resistance is high or low. And in the fourth column, it has um, reason for size of resistance. Now, let's talk about ammeters. Now, how do you connect an ammeter in a circuit? Series or parallel? Series. You always connect ammeters in series in a circuit, right? Do ammeters have or should they have a high or a low resistance? Ammeters ideally should have no resistance, but of course you know that in practice, ammeters or any other device is never, ad, ad, never ideal. So um, in the practical aspect, the resistance should be low, right? So ammeters should have low resistance, and the reason for this is that you want an ammeter to pull all the available current and therefore in order to do this it must have low resistance right so the reason for the resistance being low is that you want the ammeter to pull all the available current and for that reason of course you want the resistance to be low good now let's go to the voltmeter how do we connect a voltmeter in a circuit series or parallel we connect a voltmeter in parallel across a component in a circuit right so parallel should voltmeter should a voltmeter have a high or low resistance? Um, a voltmeter ideally should have infinite resistance, but once again, um, these devices are never ideal. So for practical purposes, a voltmeter should have a very high or high resistance as indicated by the option in the, in the column, right? So it says high or low. So the voltmeter should have a high resistance. And the reason for this is that we do not want the voltmeter to be pulling any current from any other component in the circuit as uh, this will basically affect the voltage that it is actually supposed to measure, right? So once again, a voltmeter is supposed to be connected in parallel, should have a high resistance and so that they don't pull any current from the device or uh, um, that you're actually measuring the PD across. Our meters should be connected in series, they should have a low resistance so they pull the maximum current. Good? All right, so that is part two of that, um, of A of that question. Good. And six marks for that part. Now, we're going to part B, which of course involves a circuit, which of course I will draw, right? So this is part B. So we have a circuit. Um, let me see, we have an ammeter A. We have a junction here. We have a two ohm resistor. We have another, so this is ammeter A1, so this is A1. We have another ammeter here. So labeled A and this is A2. Right, we have a two ohm resistor over here. And this of course is another two ohm resistor. Right, and 
Continuing, we have a 4 ohm resistor. Right? And then this part of the circuit is closed. Right? And lastly, well, we have our ammeter A1 there. We have a 12 volt battery, which is um, a combination of many cells. I'm not really not going to try. I'm not going to draw all of them. I'll just draw three cells. And then, of course, we have a switch. There. Right? So essentially, that's our circuit. So this is a 12 volt battery. Right? So let me just check the circuit to make sure what I have is correct. We have a 12 volt battery. We have an ammeter, A1. We have a 2 ohm resistor, right? We have another 2 ohm resistor there. We have a 4 ohm resistor here. And we have um, another ammeter, A2. And there's a switch here, right? So that's basically our circuit. All right, so we've checked the circuit and the circuit is drawn correctly. Now the question asks us or tells us to calculate the reading on each of the meters shown in the circuit in figure two when the switch is closed, right? So let's just close our switch and analyze what is happening in the circuit. Now when this switch is closed, our 12 volt battery is driving, it's gonna be driving a current. And let's call this current I. Right? So the battery is driving a total current I. So therefore, the reading on this ammeter A1 will be the total current that is being driven by the battery. The total current flowing through the circuit. Good? Now, what happens to this current I? Right? There's a junction here. And there's another junction here. Let's call this junction um, B and this junction C. Now, the, the total current I flows into this junction. But of course, when the current reaches this junction, it will see that it has multiple parts. It has two parts. So what the current will do is that it will split and the portion of the current, let's call it I1, will flow through this two ohm resistor and the other portion of the current, I2, will flow through this two ohm resistor and continue to flow through this four ohm resistor. Now, from that, we can actually de um, we can determine a few things. Because the current splits at this junction, junction B, then the, the resistances in the different branches, of course, will be in parallel, right? So a portion of the current I1 flows through two ohm resistor, and the second portion flows through this branch of the circuit. So whatever resistors are in this branch will be in parallel with this one. Now, because I2, the same current I2, flows through this 2 ohm resistor as well as the 4 ohm resistor. Essentially, these two resistors are connected in series and that combination is in parallel with this 2 ohm resistor, right? So once again, based on what we've analyzed, um, these two resistors are connected in series and that combination is connected in parallel with this 2 ohm resistor, right? So we can actually, should I redraw the circuit first? Um, all right, let me, let, let me just um, redraw the circuit, um, which hopefully will make it a little bit clearer how, 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 how these components are connected, right? So essentially, as I mentioned, this 2 ohm and this 4 ohm are connected in series. So that 2 ohm and that 4 ohm are connected in series and that combination is in parallel with this 2 ohm resistor which of course we have connected the ammeter A2. Right, so let's continue with just redrawing the circuit to hopefully make it clearer as to what is happening. Right, so we, we've managed to redraw this part of the circuit. Now, this 12 volt battery 
is going to be connected, it's connected across the entire combination, right? So we can draw it to look like this. So we basically have, let's put some connectors here. And of course, let's put our ammeter or ammeter A1 here. So this is A, which is A1, right? And our battery, So essentially, that is our same circuit, right? So that is our circuit, and this of course will be our junction B, and this will be our junction C, right? So this is, this is the same circuit. So 12 volts plus minus, this is driving the total current I at junction B, the current splits, and so we said that I1 flows through this 2 ohm resistor, and I2 flows through the 2 ohm and the 4 ohm which are connected in series, right? So that's essentially the same circuit, it just looks a little bit differently. Looks a, looks a little bit different, right? All right, so having done that now, they want us to find the reading on A1. So as we established, A1 would be reading or we're measuring the entire current flowing in the circuit. So what we really want to find is the total current I. Now, in order to do that, we must first find the total circuit resistance and then use Ohm's law in the form V is equal to IR, right? So, total circuit resistance. Now, the 2 ohm and the 4 ohm are connected in series. So, essentially, this is a single 6 ohm resistor which is connected in parallel with the 2 ohm resistor. And so, we can say the total circuit resistance RT would be the combination of this combined 6 ohm in parallel with the 2 ohm. And of course, as we've seen before, if there are two resistors connected in parallel, the equivalent resistance is the product divided by their sum. So this is going to be equal to 6 times 2 divided by 6 plus 2, which gives us 12 over 8, which is equal to 1.5 ohms. So the total circuit resistance is, of course, 1.5 ohms. And therefore, the total current I using I is equal to V over RT, then this gives us 12 volts divided by 1.5 ohms, which gives us 8 amperes. So the total current flowing I is 8 amperes, and therefore the reading on a meter A1 is equal to 8 amperes, right? So the reading on a meter A1 equals 8 amperes, as a meter A1 measures the total current flowing, and the total current flowing I is equal to 8 amperes. Good? Now, how do we go about finding um, the current, the reading on I, reading on a meter A2, which of course is I1? Now, as I established before, this resistor, the 2 ohm resistor, or these two rather, are connected in series. But that combination is essentially connected in parallel with the 2 ohm resistor. So essentially what we have is parallel combination of resistors and across that parallel combination we have the battery, right? So if we were to draw a little simpler circuit again too, essentially what we have is this. We have a 2 ohm resistor. We have a 2 ohm resistor connected in parallel with a 6 ohm resistor. And across that parallel combination, we have a battery, a 12 volt battery. Right? So we're simplifying this circuit. So we're basically just leaving out the ammeters, right? And driving the total current I. So because, of course, they are connected in parallel and the battery is connected across them, it means that the PD across each resistor or this combination will be the same. So the PD across the 2 ohm and the PD across this combined 6 ohm will be the same. And because the battery is connected across that combination, the PD across either of them will be equal to 12 volts. Right? So therefore, the PD across the 2 ohm is equal to the battery voltage, 12 volts. And the PD across this combined 2 ohm and 4 ohm, which gives us 6 ohm, is also 12 volts. And therefore, to find the reading on ammeter A2, that is current I1, we can use the formula I1 is equal to V over R, and this gives us 12 volts divided by um, 2 ohms, which gives us 6 amperes, right? 
So that was the last part of the question. But just to, just to prove something, let's also calculate the current I2. Once again, we said that the PD across this combination will be the same. And this combination is 2 plus 4, 6 ohms. So if we want to calculate the current I2, basically the same formula, we'll get I2 will be equal to 12 volts divided by 6 ohms, which gives us 2 amperes. And what, what do we notice from those two values? These two currents, of course, add to give the total current, which is 8 amperes, which, of course, is, is verification of what we just calculated, right? So, once again, um, we basically redo the circuit to make it, um, try, to, try to make it look more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Try to make it a bit more understandable, a bit more straightforward. And we basically then use that now to find the, um, the, the, the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor, right? So, this was um, paper 2, question 5 from May, June 2015.